for Hairlock Saul. I am Skeggy Vetter, and welcome to the Norse Code, a show in which we explore Norse mythology, honoring the gods, and overall working with them. In this, our very first episode, I thought perhaps we should, you know, talk a little bit about what the show is, what I expect from it, and maybe a little bit about me. So, the Norse Code, where did this all come from? Well, it dawned on me not too long ago that I have a lot to learn on Norse mythology. Now, I've been studying Norse mythology for most of my adult life, especially over the last three, four years. It's been a huge, huge aspect of my life. Uh, but I met a few friends recently who showed me that I still have a lot to learn. There's so much that I don't know or that I learned, read about once, but don't necessarily remember. So I need to start doing that. Uh, but about a month ago, I was asked to kind of give a one hour lecture for a metaphysical group that I belong to on a introduction to Norse mythology, which was a lot of fun. Uh, so I put a little presentation together and kind of, you know, did a little one hour presentation. It was very high level, you know, talked about the um, places within Norse mythology, some of the major players, like the races, some of the gods. Then we went into very high level creation and Ragnarok. Tons of fun. Loved it. So I told my fiance that, you know, maybe I should do a podcast and just kind of go through Norse mythology the way I did with this, this lecture. It'd be a lot of fun. You know, I've been looking to get back into podcasting. I actually used to do a ghost hunting podcast, which I might restart at some point. But, you know, I really wanted to capture the, the, my journey on Norse mythology, Norse paganism, you know, and kind of, you know, bring people along with me. Have you learn with me? And so my thought was, you know, if I do this podcast, I can teach what I know. And while doing so, continue to learn and learn with you guys. You know, kind of bring you on this journey with me, help you on your own journey, or be, be just entertain you. So went back and forth, you know, you know, what, what am I going to do? How am I going to do it? Am I going to do it at all? And I, I, I do apologize for the noise. You know, I am in the woods, but there's a major highway uh, about a quarter mile away, and there's a lot of trucking on that highway. So you might hear some more noise than I'd like you guys to hear. Uh, where was I? Right. So what I was going to do, there goes a the deer. Sorry, I got distracted. <laughs> so, my fiance said I absolutely should do this podcast. Uh, I pulled runes and it said, do the podcast. I even had an interaction, a, a full conversation with Freyr, in which I was told, do the podcast. Sorry, I keep looking at, the, there's a deer walking right through there. Yeah, and for those of you who are listening to this as opposed to watching it, uh, I'm, I'm in the middle of the woods. <laughs> I figure what better place to start this podcast than in the middle of the woods, close to the gods. So, yeah, like I said, had a conversation with Freyr, and he told me, do the podcast. I, I'm going to do an episode on that conversation because that led to some other things and I absolutely 100% want to talk to you guys about that. But, but that's a different episode. So, like, okay, I, I'm going to do it. But live or pre-recorded? Back and forth on it. Also went back and forth on it. Is it just mythology or am I going to add in the paganism stuff? I, I don't know. Ultimately, I decided, yes, to all of the above. 
<laughs> uh, I'm going to do some pre-recorded, uh, especially when I'm talking about the paganis paganistic aspects of it, because uh, then I could come out to places like this and record in nature. And when I do something that's more Norse mythology, where I can kind of have a presentation together and, and show you things, I'll do that from home and I'll, I'll do that live. So if any of you guys want to jump on and kind of watch and interact with me, asking questions as I'm going through it, I think that'd be very beneficial not only to you guys, but to me as well. Because then I, I'll hear what it is you want to know and I could kind of go in that direction. Uh, also, if I ask a question that I don't know the answer to, now I know something else I need to go look up. So, that's a really angry squirrel. <laughs> Alright, so when I'm recording in the woods, I might get distracted by animals. It happens. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I think that happens to most of us. But, so yeah, so what I expect from this podcast is, um, or vodcast, I guess, because I'm doing it with video. Anyway. What I expect is, you know, have, I'm hoping to alternate episodes where we do one on mythology and then one on paganism and back and forth, you know, and I'd also like to do crafting, you know, a, a big part of honoring the gods is making stuff for them, making stuff for yourself. Um, I mean, everything that I'm wearing, this whole Viking garb here, I made myself, you know, other than my axe, I modified my axe, but... I didn't, I didn't necessarily make this. Um, so I have some other projects in mind that I will record and go through with you guys. And if there's anything that you see me wearing or using that you want to see how I made it, just let me know. And, you know, because I only have the one tunic, definitely want to make some more want to make a new pair of pants these are getting kind of old um, not a big fan of the this hood I, I didn't use very good fabric so I'm gonna remake that as well but uh, yeah we, you know we'll go through and, and go through the Norse mythology and, and learn about the you know the, the sources and, and the mythology and, and all the stories and what it means what it means to us those who you know, look to the gods for advice and, and the runes and all this. And then how to honor those gods. You know, what, what, what are things that I do to honor the gods, to, to worship the gods that might influence you guys? Or, you know, if you have something that you do, you know, let me know during a live or leave it in the comments. And it might be something that works, you know, might help me move along. I really want to kind of build this community where we help each other. Unfortunately, in especially the Norse community, there seems to be a lot of infighting. There are different aspects of or ways to worship the gods. You know, you have Asatru and heathenism and Odinist and you know a, a couple others that I'm forgetting off the top of my head, but. They, they tend to not like each other, which I don't doesn't make sense, at least not to me. Um, but they, you know, th there's also people who only do a cursory look into the history, and then if anybody does anything other than that, they attack them. Um, oftentimes, when I'm wearing my Norse costume, I'll have some face paint on, especially if I'm wearing full armor. Well, I've been attacked for that. Not like physically attacked, but verbally, you know, there, there's no evidence for Vikings wearing war paint. No, there isn't, but lack of evidence for is not evidence against. And if you look at pretty much every other culture, especially at that time, and, and especially warlike cultures, they all wore war paint, you know, had some sort of paint on their face. So it only makes sense that the Vikings did too and it's we don't have actual pictures of Vikings we don't even have really drawings of Vikings we have a couple of descriptions and that's about it but war paint's not going to survive in the archaeological record so it makes sense that they would 
but just because we don't have archaeological evidence does not mean that they didn't. You know, the same with the runes. I've been taxed for using, calling myself, you know, doing things Viking related and then using the Elder Futhark. Like, oh, the, the Elder Futhark was not used in the Viking Age. Well, yes and no. It was not the primary writing system during the Viking Age. It, you know, the younger Futhark was. But the Elder Futhark was still used for magic and ritualistic stuff. And what people seem to forget is just because it's Norse doesn't mean it's just the Viking Age. You know, these people didn't only exist during the Viking Age. They had thousands of years of history leading up to the Viking Age. So you can't only look at Vikings. You got to look at the whole Scandinavian people over two, three thousand years. And, and that's where we need to draw our inspiration from. That's where we need to draw our knowledge from not just the short couple hundred years of the Viking Age. But that gets lost in some people, so... And they get very adamant and angry about it, so I'm hoping to kind of squash that, at least in the community of me, you, and like-minded people. So that's kind of where I'm at with the, the show and, and where I want to go with it. Um, well, I'm sure you guys want to know a little bit about me. Obviously, my name is not actually Skeggy Vetter. Skeggy Vetter is my Instagram handle. I did go back and forth on whether I was going to use my real name or not. Uh, my fiance suggested I don't. And the main reason for that is there are some people in my life who I don't want to know I'm a pagan. And I'm sure they're going to find out eventually, but hopefully on my terms when I want them to find out. And not using my real name is one way to help keep a little anonymity until I'm ready to tell these people. Plus, it sounds a lot cooler than my real name. My real name is quite boring. Maybe I'll reveal it to you guys at some point in the future. Uh, but, but, yeah, so I've been into the, well, into Viking stuff pretty much my whole life. Uh, they've all re always interested me. Uh, but the mythology, really, you know, most of my adult life is where the mythology kind of took hold. But prior to that, it was the history of the Vikings, the the um, culture. But you can't really understand the history without understanding the culture. You can't understand the culture without understanding the religion. You can't understand the religion without understanding the mythology. And I, look, I'm by no means an expert, not even close. But I have been studying for years. I do have a level of knowledge. I would say, you know, intermediate, maybe. Um, but like I said before, there's so much to, to learn still. And I want to take that journey with you guys. Um, but, you know, going into, going back to myself, the last three, four years have really been a deep dive into the mythology, especially the mythology. Uh, you know, I was making my, my costume, which is as historically accurate as is, or was practical at the time I made it. I am uh, still modifying it, adding things to it, re remaking some things to be even more historically accurate. You know, because you got to take time and money into your practicality of building this, making this kind of stuff, you know. Um, <laughs> you know, it's funny, my ex-wife, she would tell me, you know, you're spending all this time, all this money making this Viking costume. And it is full costume, chain mill, leather armor, helm, cloaks, weapons, the whole nine yards. Said, when the hell are you ever going to wear it? Said, well, you know, there's the Renaissance fairs. Uh, we have locally a thing called Fairy Fest, which is like a Renaissance fair, but focuses on the medieval creatures. You know, obviously there's Halloween. I said, I don't know. I might just wear it around the house. And she goes, you're not just going to wear it around the house. So the next time that I had a day off where she had to go to work, she came home. I was sitting full armor, whole nine yards, watching TV, sitting on the couch, feet up. Yeah, I'm that guy. <laughs> um, but honestly, in this past year, I have... Um, this stump is really uncomfortable. 
Uh, I have, in fact, worn this costume at least, this is probably the fifth time I've worn it this year, and it's August. I keep finding new places to wear it. Uh, there's a metaphysical store in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, called Nature's Touch. They have a whole Viking aspect to it. And I, I was there for the grand opening in costume. I've been there a couple times in costume for other events. And we'll continue to go there in costume to support them. And if you go to Gettysburg, 100% check out Nature's Touch. It's an amazing place. I got off topic. What was I talking about? Right. Me. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I'll make a whole episode on how I transitioned from Catholic to pagan and kind of because that was a whole journey in and of itself interesting one too so yeah i'll do that episode at some point but what you need to know now is i am a norse pagan uh ex-wife did not like that but i didn't really tell her until we had decided to split up anyway so uh my current fiance loves it she's also kind of pagan although more celtic uh, which is kind of cool. We get a, get along in a lot of ways. Uh, there, there's a lot of overlap between Celtic and, and Norse, and, and I think a lot of that comes from the fact that the Norse pretty much controlled Ireland and Scotland for a good long time. So there's, there's definitely been uh, intermixing of the two religions, and you get overlap. I don't know how much overlap pre-existed the Viking Age. Uh, it's really hard to tell because we don't have very many written sources on either one, but interesting nonetheless. Uh, so yeah, I, you know, my the, the gods that I, I worship mostly, uh, primarily is Skavi. Uh, I actually had an interaction with with Skavi uh, right right early on in my my career path as a pagan. Um, it's not the first interaction I had. The first interaction I had was actually with Thor. Uh, I was... I hadn't even decided 100% that I believed in the gods. I, I was kind of on that fence. And I was carving some effigies of Odin, Frigga, and Thor. And my brother came over and asked what I was doing. I was showing him. And I had already done Odin. I was currently working on Frigga. And Thor was next. And I told him that, so I was, I was doing Thor last. As soon as I said that, big boom of thunder outside. Scared the crap out of us because we didn't know it was going to be raining. And he's like, well, I guess you pissed off Thor. So I immediately apologized to Thor and explained to him, like, look, you're last because it made sense in the hierarchy. It made sense to do Odin first. And then his wife Frigga and then Thor. If I was doing more effigies, then Thor would have been much higher on the list. But because I was only doing three, he was last. I actually, I should carve some more. Um, but going on to Scavi, after I had made that transition and I'm starting to walk this path, we got snow, about 10 inches, fell really early in the year. And at the time, I hated snow, I hated the cold, I hated the winter. And so I said a prayer to Scavi, wrote her name in runes in the snow in the hopes that I can shovel the snow without getting cold. Which, I mean, it did work, but you also got to keep in mind I'm doing physical activity. That's going to keep you warm. Anyway, finished shoveling the snow at the bottom of my driveway, and I'm just leaning on the shovel, looking up at the house, and a woman walks up behind me and puts her arm over my shoulder. Yeah, except there's nobody there. I heard the footsteps come up. I felt her body next to mine. I felt the weight of her arm going over my shoulder. And in my mind's eye, I can see who it was. And I knew immediately it was Scotty. And I was completely dumbstruck. I was in awe. I, I wish I took the opportunity to give her a proper greeting and to um, maybe ask a couple questions. But I was just, oh my God there's a goddess here and just dumb shook and then she's gone she was only there maybe five seconds or so but that cemented to me that the gods are real 
they can visit you and I'm going down this path. Since then, she's visited me a couple times. Not in, in a full bodied form like that, but there's been times that I've felt her presence and I knew it was her presence. Um, as I said, I've actually had a conversation with Freyr. That's a really interesting conversation uh, and, and an interesting story. I will do a whole episode on that. And that's going to actually be a two part episode because that conversation leads into a whole nother discussion that I kind of want to break off separate. Another interesting interaction that I've had with the gods is, you know, I, I had a fire going one night in my fire pit and decided to give an offering. And, you know, I, I was ended up giving an offering to Odin, Loki, Thor, Freya, and Skadi. Um, for Skadi, I used caramel vodka. She seems to really like that. Everyone else, I used mead. Uh, so I toasted to, to Odin and to Thor and Freya and then Loki. Now I don't worship Loki but if you read the mythology it says that Odin will never accept the drink unless Loki's offered it too. So if you give an offering of alcohol to Odin you have to give it to Loki as well. Otherwise Odin won't accept the offering. So uh, just trying to get comfortable. So I gave the offering to Loki and as soon as I did the direction of the wind changed and blew all the smoke right at me and I just kind of laughed and like yep Loki the trickster having a little fun with me uh, and then I you know, gave the vodka to Skadi and when it did flames blew up way higher and the mead they were blowing up a little bit the, the vodka they went sky high uh, and it was only just a little shot it wasn't a whole lot um, yeah, you know, I, I've had interesting interactions with the gods. You know, it's cemented that they're they're that they're real to me. That you know, they're this is this is a thing. You know, they're there. Uh, and then nature spirits as well. I mean, right here in this location, there are nature spirits. This is my hunting lease. Uh, behind the camera, there's a little there's a hill that goes up to a ridge line. On top of that ridge line, there's a big boulder. You can actually big enough you can climb up and sit on top of it. I get, leave offerings there because there's a nature spirit that resides right there, and it protects this whole forest. So I always make an offering to that spirit because this place is beautiful, and you know when you have the nature spirits that protect the place, or if you have fae that protect the place got to make offerings to them because it helps it gives them energy it gives them you know, not only does it provide you safe passage but it gives them energy that they can continue to make the th forest thrive and I love nature I'm always out in nature I hike a lot that's one of the reasons that a lot of these episodes are going to be pre-recorded when I'm out in the woods now I don't often wear my biking clothes when I'm hiking but maybe I should. Perhaps I should do more of that. Perhaps I will, especially with these episodes. I should plan on wearing my Viking clothes for, especially the, at least the pre-recorded ones. The live ones, what I'm doing for my house, probably not. But, um, yeah. So that's kind of where I'm at with things. It's kind of where I expect this, this show to go. Um, I know this wasn't the most interesting of episodes, but I kind of wanted to get out that explanation of, of myself and the show and kind of kick this thing off. The next episode will be a live one. Uh, you could find it on, I'm going to stream onto YouTube, uh, which is uh, the Norse Code Podcast, uh, or Facebook, the Norse Code, the Code Podcast which at the time of recording this, I only just created and don't have anything posted there. Before I post this video, I will have a couple things up there, a little introduction and all that. Like a written out int introduction. Uh, so I'll, I'll stream to both of those. Um, I'm thinking I'm gonna do episodes every three, four weeks. 
I'd love to do every other week, but I just have way too many other things going on. I, I could not keep up with that schedule. So three, four weeks is what I'll do. So it is mid-August. So get, for, figure in a few days to a week, I'll post this video. And then early, mid-September, we'll do the live. And the live one will be the, the lecture that I've mentioned on the introduction to Norse mythology. This way we can go over um, the places, the uh, races, some of the key players. We'll touch on creation and Ragnarok. Eventually we'll do full episodes on creation, a full episode on Ragnarok. But this will just be like a general introduction to the whole thing. Uh, and this way we kind of have that basis to build off of as we continue on and in further episodes either talk about you know, stories of a god or a certain thing that happened, like Odin's journey. As he found the runes and the bolospa and all that, uh, that can be a whole episode in and of itself. You know, Thor and, and Jormungandr, and Loki and his children, uh, Freyr, Freyr, Ullr, the Vanir. Uh, actually, Ullr and the Vanir is an episode I really want to do, and that ties into the conversation I had with Freyr. Um, I'd love to do, like I said, some videos or some episodes on making the clothing, designing it, um, kind of how I came about this whole thing. Because this, there's a story in all my clothing. You know, I have a whole background because there's a little bit of a mismatch of some stuff, and there's a reason for that. Uh, and then, you know, we'll do more on the gods worshiping them, how to make an offering, like what I do, what I know some other people do. Uh, you know, crafting a staff. I'm actually making a more of like a druidic type staff that I can take on hikes with me. So when I, if I do a ritual in the woods, I don't have to bring my big, nice staff that has bones and everything on it. This would be something more simple, a little bit more uh, druidistic, druistic, druistic, druid-like, <laughs> uh, and kind of go through how I'm making that. I'll, I'll start filming that because I'm going to be working on that this week I hope but thank you for listening to me ramble I promise more episodes the further episodes will be a little bit more structured uh, because I'll have the set things that I need to cover whereas today was just kind of a introduction and a little chat about the the show and myself um, if there's more you'd like to know about me or the show if you have questions you know drop me a line leave a comment uh, pop up in one of our live streams and ask away and I can't promise I'll answer every question uh, but you can ask anything you want and if I don't want to answer it I'll tell you I don't want to answer it and here's why uh, so thank you for starting this journey with me I hope I didn't bore you <laughs> um, and I hope you've enjoyed the scenery behind me obviously the Sun's coming up over the mountains now and getting a, quite a bit brighter. It is pretty early in the morning. So I am going to go finish up my hike and then head home and get some other work done. So thank you for joining me. I hope you have a lovely day. Take care. <laughs>